Sports fans, what's going on? Welcome to the first ever edition of Court Vision. This is our show, War Room Sports, in conjunction with the Sports Kings. We're back together like Voltron because we figure we create great content, so let's just keep it going with basketball. Uh, like I said, this is the first episode, so let me introduce the panel. First, we have Frank from Sports Kings. Frank, you excited about yep. the season? Oh, yeah. Shout out to Gerald Wallace. Keep gangbanging on that bacon. Don't let those Boston coaches hold you down, B. <laughs> <laughs> My partner in crime, Dev from War Room Sports, repping the Sixers. What's going on? Rigging for Wiggins, baby. Rigging for Wiggins. And Andy from the Sports Kings, the basketball aficionado. Andy, what's going on? You ready for this season? I'm ready to watch my magic be about as subpar as your Sixers, Dev. <laughs> great. <laughs> That's right. We have a real live Orlando Magic fan if you've never met one. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is our first episode, and uh, we're filming this before the season actually starts. So what we're going to do is just go through every award and give our you know, preseason – well, not preseason. That's over with this time. But uh, we're going to give our awards before the season starts, and then we'll revisit this uh, after the All-Star break. But let's just see what you guys think going into the season. So with that being said, I'll go around the table, starting with you, Frank. The first one is Sixth Man of the Year. Sixth Man of the Year, I got Tyreek Evans, New Orleans Pelicans. I, I like that team. I like what they're doing. I think that three-guard rotation is going to be vicious with Reek coming off the bench, playing that Ginobili role. Absolutely. Okay, Oh, Dev. Pelicans. Oh. Dev, what do you think? Pelicans, though. Can't take um, them seriously. I don't know. Six Man has a lot of candidates this season. I mean, the, the conversation we just had before the show, you know, I just added Swaggy P to my list. But Swaggy I'm gonna, P! I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm not even 100% sure what their starting lineup is going to look like, but I think um, this guy is, is going to be, you know, coming off the bench this year. I'm going to go with Clay Thompson of the Golden State Warriors because um, I believe Iguodala is going to be at the two – Harrison Barnes is going to start at the three. So, you know, that leaves that much-needed offense for the Golden State Warriors coming off that bench, you know, in a season where they actually think they're going to, you know, take a deep run into the playoffs. Yo, I got Clay Thompson. Here's the thing. Two of you guys have already named, like, two of my top three people. Let's see what Andy says. Because we didn't discuss this before the show, by the way. Nobody knows who anybody's fix is. So, Andy, who do you have at six men of the year? Uh, well, a couple of guys I had right off the bat where I had Harrison Barnes, which would kind of foil Dev if that happens. Uh, I, see, <laughs> I see Clay starting there with Iguodala, uh, just, you know, spreading the floor. Iguodala kind of handling, taking a little bit of the load off of Curry uh, at that point forward position. But uh, I have Jarrett Jack, too, playing with the Cavs now. I mean, he Because he he's going to be jacking. Year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Jared Jack was uh, the jack and jack and man. A little, a little banged up, but ultimately uh, I'm with Frank, uh, Tyreek Evans. The only thing that might kill that, though, is we know Eric Gordon's only playing about seven games. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, that's almost guaranteed at this point. And then what do they do? But uh, yeah, I thought about I, I that as well. I'm gonna well give you Jimmy, let, me, let me get a backup just in case my starting lineup doesn't pan out. Okay. I'm going to go with the crazy dude out in Indiana. I'm going to go with Lance Stevenson on that one. Ooh. He's going to have his, uh, I shouldn't call it a breakout season because Lance Stevenson is considered one of the best defenders. But um, I had a couple names on my list. I had Ryan Anderson on my list. Um, I thought about that. Yeah. You know, so the, the top two on my list were Ryan Anderson and, and Tariq Evans. But like Andy said, Tariq Evans is going to be starting. And we know that just based upon <laughs> um, history and injury. So I'm going to go with my pick of Ryan Anderson to be the sixth man of the year. So, uh, Dev, I guess, I guess uh, what you and Eddie are saying is, depending upon who starts, the other guy is going to be a candidate for the sixth man of the year <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> in so. Golden State. You know, yeah. Very, very plausible. I see Absolutely. Harrison Barnes adding more to that start lineup, but we'll see what uh, uh, Mark Jackson does. Yeah, real quick, I was actually going to pick Ryan Anderson too, but I think he might get traded by, yeah, by the sure end of the season. Yeah, sure you were. So yeah, I'm sure. that's, <laughs> the reason why I didn't. that's the reason why I didn't go with Ryan I've, Anderson. Got you, got you, got you. All right, well, the next one I want to talk about is Rookie of the Year. I'll just go first uh, because I've actually did a video myself on um, my early. This was right after the draft, and I had Victor Oladipo. That should make Andy sound, you know, a little happy. Um, just because I think he's in the ideal situation <clears throat> to, you know, get a lot of shots and produce. I mean, I don't know how good the team will be, but I think, uh, you know, he should be in the running for the Rookie of the Year, and that's my early season pick. Um, Andy, I'll go back to you. Who do you have as Rookie of the Year? I mean, I was on the fence with this one. Uh, I had a couple guys, and, and Victor, obviously, I, I want to kind of put my heart out there being an Orlando fan. And I First think name basis already. First name yeah. basis. Victor. Yeah, we Victor. Yeah, yeah, Victor. Yeah, Victor. 
<laughs> My man. I have him on speed dial anyways. But uh, the, the thing with Victor that kind of scares me is the fact that I think he's going to get that early Josh Smith type award because he's going to stuff the sheet. I mean, we've seen him steal the ball, and, you know, he plays good defense. He can block and stuff like that. And he's going to get looks at the point and the shooting guard from what I, I, I read. But uh, ultimately, I'm going uh, Deb's direction, and I'm going to say Michael Carter-Williams. Ugh. Mm. Are you serious? Opportunity. Yeah. Jim. Who, who's I was telling him not to shoot the ball on that? I mean, this is true. List. This is true, but he wasn't even on my list. I ain't going to lie to you. Um, Dev, let's go right list. to you, Dev. He's he on your on list. My list. Like, but who's your pick, though? He's on your I, list, but who's your no, pick? No, but I, I wanted to make him my pick. I didn't want to look like a Homer Simpson. Um, now that he and, opened the door for you, though. Andy just gave me some confidence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andy just gave me some confidence. I'm still not going to pick him, but I want everybody out there to know that, you know. Uh, he was on my list. Um, rookie of the year, but for me, right now I say is between Victor Oladipo and and Ben McLemore. But yeah, uh, I think Oladipo might get more of an opportunity to you know showcase his whole game uh, right off the bat than McLemore might. So I'm gonna just I'm by default. I'm going to have to go with Oladipo in this gotcha. one as well. Hey, Frank, you see what they did there? I'll take your guy. You take my guy. So we yeah, either one of us sound like homies. I, I saw <laughs> that. See that? You see that? All yeah, right, Frank. I'm, I'm going to go with Mason Plumley. I'm going with my own. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Uh, t- to me, I feel like Kelly Olynyk deserves at least a mention in this segment because I think he's going to have a monster year offensively, at least for the Celtics. But as Andy knows, I got my boy, Victor. Dwayne Wade-ish esque Oladipo. He plays okay. defense though. Yeah. You know what? Offensively, his workouts impress me more than his actual college game. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I saw some workouts. I'm like, I didn't know he had all of that. So you know, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that translates to the NBA. I was about to say, word, I needed, to, word to Mike Mamula. I mean, all I needed was in, in his post draft interview. I can't remember verbatim what he said, but. You know, they asked, oh, what are you going to bring to the Magic? And he said, I'm going to bring a work ethic like they've never seen before. And I was like, that's my dude right there, rookie of the year. And then, that's what I the, say when and I then the workout video. videos came out. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I don't go to a job interview and be like, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to go take a nap. No, it's, it's the way he said it, though. You could tell, like, he was I, just serious. I believe him. The thing I still like about uh, Carter Williams is the fact that out of all these guys we mentioned, he's probably the only one who's going to start. Uh, Oladipo is not going to start. Bum, though. Ooh, bum. but you, you know he's a six-seven point guard bum. I shied away. <laughs> so was Sean Livingston. <laughs> I hey, shied away from injury, Michael Carter Williams, Jim, a little bit because even though the Rookie of the Year, this is the award in the NBA where uh, the team's record probably doesn't matter the most. So, but I, but I still thought that the Sixers might be that bad that you know nobody from there is going to get considered. Because <laughs> they might have like six wins this season. So. Yeah. And Frank, so, to your know. point, that was like a job interview. I mean, it's not like he was, uh, you know, Will Hunting where he can just go in there and say what he wanted to. Anyway, yeah, um, he, already <laughs> he already got picked. He didn't care. He anyway, play. this is true. This is true. Frank, I'm going to start right with you. Let's go to Coach of the Year. Uh, I know somebody's going to pick my guy, so this, I'm just going to put out there. Coach of the Year, who do you got, Frank? Coach of the Year, I got Tom Thibodeau. Um, Thibodeau, Thibodeau, I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's who I got. I think Both. the Bulls are going to win the one seed in the East. And I think that's why he's going to be coach of the year. Dad. I think Tibbs should have won it last year and probably the year before. Um, the, he he makes this team, you know, play the kind of defense that you just don't see night in and night out in the NBA. Uh, just like Frank said, you know, with rolls back in the fold, um, with the with the guys playing the kind of defense that they play. I think they're going to be hovering right around that one or two seed, so i got to agree with that one. Okay, Andy, what do you think? I'm going with Doc Rivers, uh, Los Angeles Clippers. I just I, I feel like, obviously, his coaching credentials are there. Uh, this Clippers team obviously was, was a legit team last year. They've gotten better, I mean, with the additions of J.J. Redick. Uh, Darren Collison is, is back backing up Chris Paul. I mean, he goes from a uh, – you know, I mean, he was kind of a shoddy starter. Uh, but he was worthy. I mean, they, name a fantasy league that he wasn't drafted in last year, so his numbers were there. I think yeah. as a backup, he'll be perfect. Uh, Byron Mullins, Antoine Jameson is, is definitely an upgrade to uh, that uh, crackhead Lamar Odom. So, <laughs> yeah. <Yo. laughs> I'm, too right at him. I'm sorry. Um, well, see, my girlfriend's watching the Kardashians right now in the other room. 
But uh, so yeah, I, I think I think Doc Rivers is going to bring you know a work ethic. I think he's perfect for Chris Paul. Um, I mean, obviously Blake Griffin, the, that team's probably going to depend a lot on his development. But they've got a lot of pieces. I, I think that team's very scary. I think um, Doc. I think he's like the the sentimental front runner. I think he's the one who's probably expected to win it because everybody is expecting him to to take the Clippers to that next level. But you talked about his coaching credentials. I know Doc won a championship, but I think Doc's a little overrated. Personally. Personally. What was, what was Doc doing before Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen showed up? About to get fired. I mean, he, he won before. home from Orlando before. What's happened? He was, he was hovering right below 500 in Orlando, came to the Celtics, was about to get canned again, and then his luck he got a bum yeah. rap in Orlando, though. Those, some of those teams with Tracy McGrady, I mean, I don't think Kobe could have carried those teams to the playoffs. It was, yeah. it was I mean, it was ridiculous. So no, they were bad. I don't think Jesus could have carried them to the playoffs. They were that bad. <laughs> I mean, but, they were starting guys like Pat Burke, Pat Garrett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bill, Bill Simmons wrote a piece on McGrady's career, and he showed, like, every guy that Tracy McGrady played with in his career in Orlando. Those yeah. guys were just bums. And I want my money, terrible. Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons owes me a check. I've been saying that for, like, ten years. <laughs> Yeah, cut, 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 the, cut the sport cut the king's check. check. Yo, but listen though, um, you guys took my top two picks. So I figured that would happen. I think. I mean, I think. Uh, you know, I would. I would say. I would say Mo Cheeks just to be funny. But honestly though, um, <laughs> my top two guys were Thibodeau and uh and Doc Rivers. I'm gonna go with Doc Rivers as well. Um, Thibodeau is getting to the point where he's like so good of a coach that he's gonna start getting overlooked. Like sort of like Greg Popovich. He's getting to that point because I agree with Dev. He should have won it last year. And, in fact, his team, I've never seen a team that plays defense night in and night out the way they do. They may not win every game, but they they, they actually, you know, give it their all every game. And I can't say that for a lot of NBA teams. I watch a lot of basketball, and I watch a lot of always, teams. That's why they're always injured, though. That's true, too. But I watch a lot of teams, and you can just watch and say, look, they're not even trying the night. Like, they took the night off. And it happens even to the, even to the Heat. I mean, yeah. but at the end of the day, his teams never do that. But also, just talking basketball with people, he's always overlooked. It's like he's as expected to be a good coach at this point. You know, he's getting into the Popovich role. So I'm going to go with Doc Rivers, um, part of what Devin said, the sentimental pick. Um, the team did win like 56 games last year, so how is he going to really improve over that? But they probably could win 52 games and he'll win a coach the year anyway. And the um, coach got canned after that, after the greatest <laughs> season in Clipper history. The coach gets canned. This is true. Andy, back to you. Let's start with uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Who's your pick? Uh, much like you were just saying uh, in regards to Tibbs getting overlooked because, you know, he's he's that good. I feel like this guy's been overlooked two years in a row now. Uh, kind of a no-brainer for me and Dwight Howard. Uh, I, I don't know how he finished 13th or 12th or whatever he finished last year. That was kind of, you know, insane to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, better numbers. people kept support. scoring on the Lakers. Uh, true, yeah. true, but isn't that an individual award? I mean, defensive, defensive player of the year, yeah, so I mean, I that, that no. hurt. But. He usually stops the other team from scoring, last line he, of defense. He was in the world's doghouse last year. He wasn't winning any awards. That, well, that's yeah. what I'm saying, and he's in the world's doghouse this year, so he's probably not going to win it again, but I, I still think he'll be the better defensive player. He was better than Chandler two years ago. He was better than Marcus Hall last year, and I expect what? him to be the best he he was Marcus, not better than Marcus. Marcus last year. I can uh -oh, uh -oh. Marcus can be in Marcus no role, and he will uh -oh. do the same thing. He, he I don't gets, know. Like, I think Dwight I think Howard Marcus... gets more defensive rebounds a game than Marcus All gets rebounds. But the Lakers' Marcus biggest Saul... problem last year was they were terrible on defense more than anything, and he's look at their he's... guards. Oh, and they have Marcus Saul is the actually a post defender, not like that last line guy who's going to block shots and get a bunch of rebounds. I think he actually d's up. You know what I mean, man to man, but. But here's the thing about this. Here's the thing with that, be, with that being said, Dev. <laughs> how many big men have a post game that he has to really defend in the post anyway? Right. That's why it was an easy award to get last year. <laughs> 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 but listen, the the best post game he had to face was in practice against Zach, and they're probably usually on the same team in practice. So. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, but here's my art, Dev. Let's stay right with you. Who's your pick for defensive player of the year? Uh, I have to agree with Andy. And I'm going with the white. I think, you know, with all the criticism, like public enemy in the league, LeBron's the bag, and uh, the white's the bad guy. Um, especially from, you know, your Laker fans, you know, everybody hates the guy. So I think he's out to prove something. I think he's going to play 
much harder than he played last year. And, and injury was a big part of that, but you can't tell that to fans. Uh, so he has a chip on his shoulder, and I think it's going to be hell for other big men in the league this year. Gotcha. Maybe not hey, offensively, but hey, Frank, before you be go, I just want, Frank, before you go, let me give my pick just because I don't want you to steal my thunder. Um, I actually think the defensive player of the year probably uh, – here's how I think it's going to happen. I think Joe Kim Noah probably should win it. But I think something tells me that the NBA is going to be funny this year, and they're going to give it to LeBron James. Watch, mm. that's just like that's, I think something fishy is going to happen. Good. I think I think LeBron's LeBron is becoming one of the better defenders. But I think just to like you know add to his legacy, you know I think Nike's going to cut the check, and LeBron will win the Defensive Player of the Year this year. <laughs> cut so, the check, yeah, I, Phil Knight, cut the check. I actually agree with that. Like he wouldn't be my pick, but I agree that something like that may go on because. I actually think LeBron had started getting defensive recognition before he actually earned it. Now that he is a good defender, like you said, they can't wait to give LeBron this award. That's what I'm saying. They can't wait to give it to him, so I think they will. But, uh, Frank, who's your pick? You know, I wrote a whole piece on uh, sports-kings.com. Don't forget the dash. Shameless plug. About this. <laughs> top, top ten candidates for defensive player. And I actually ended up picking Dwight because I thought that because Houston was so bad defensively last year that any improvement he brings to that team is going to be seen as him alone and not just the team being better. But then I changed my mind, and I'm with Jimmy. I think LeBron wins the Defensive Player of the Year because he's not going to win the MVP. And they're going to need a consolation prize to give Mr. James. I think that's why he hasn't won yet, because they don't want to give him the MVP and the defensive player, and then he wins the championship, and it's just like, Jesus, LeBron owns the world. So I think that's why he hasn't won yet. <laughs> he but does he anyway. will All right. this year. All right, Frank. So the next the next award, obviously, is MVP. We're going to stay with you. But think about this, though. Like, if he wins the defensive player of the year, that's just adding to his legacy. And I definitely think that, you know, I'm not going to say the fix is in, but they're looking to give him that award. So, Frank, stand with you. Um Who's your MVP if you said LeBron's not going to be the MVP? It's well, the I mean, only if thing that's left. There's only one player left, Mr. Kevin Durant. I Kevin think Durant. Kevin Durant is going to average like 38 points a game while Westbrook Damn. is out. I think it's going to be ridiculous how much, how good he's going to be without Westbrook. And I think it'll, like, obviously he'll level out once Westbrook gets back, but I think he finishes the season with a 35, 9 rebounds, 7 assists season. Just Damn. so crazy. Crazy. You're on a record, so you're on a record of saying Ooh. he can average 38 points. He will average 38 points for the first six weeks of the season. He will average 38 points a game for the first six weeks. Okay, got you. Yeah, while Westbrook is out, while Westbrook. Is out. Nope, no, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, who's, your, who's your pick? <laughs> who's your pick for MVP? Man, this I, I want it to go against the grain. I want it to say Kevin Durant. I wanted to say Derrick Rose with stuff to prove after sitting out for so long, but until they do something different, and I'm proven wrong. I'm going to go with LeBron James again. I mean, even though he's playing, you know, with with other superstars and a fairly deep team at this point, I, I, he's just going to carry the load again. And, you know, of course, I mean, it's a no-brainer that, you know, whatever the Heat do kind of depends on what he does. But, but actually, that might not be true because LeBron's always steady. So it might actually depend on what those other guys do, but. Yeah, I gotta go with LeBron until he does something different. Let's see, Andy. You got any curveballs? Are you going? You know, who's your pick? I I don't have anything crazy. I mean, it's I think it's going to be oh, LeBron the James. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, the the thing for me with Kevin Durant is Frank. I agree. I was saying a couple weeks ago that Durant will probably average thirty five points a game. I'm not going to go thirty eight, but thirty five points a game while Westbrook's out. The problem is is depending on how long Westbrook sits out, that team could dig themselves into a hole because they don't have anybody to score the basketball besides two. I agree. Uh, totally Westbrook, agree. they need Westbrook. I mean, they lost Kevin Martin, too. You gotta forget, they're going to have uh, Davo Cephalosha and... Uh, it's atrocious. Who, yeah, it's... it's, it's Jeremy you know, Lamb has to step and up and be Jeremy, that guy. Yeah, Jeremy Lamb. Kendrick Perkins, then, get that Jer ball on that post. Uh, yeah, Dad Kendrick hates Perkins Kendrick isn't Perkins. scoring anything. I mean, Little Serge Ibaka, we could see Fake him score guy. 15 or so a game, but... I mean, not much more than that. And, you know, Derrick Rose, I think, is one that, that could obviously win it because the Bulls are going to probably win a lot of games. And he's – Derrick Rose, I like the kid. He's a great player. But to an extent, he's overrated. I mean, there's so many people out there. Whoa! The you ask somebody who the best player in the NBA is, ask 100 people, 50 of them are going to say Derrick Rose. There shouldn't be that. No. I mean, Because they're all so. from Chicago. He's yeah. not. He's no, not but you know what, though? He, does, he does have a huge fan base. But I think a yes. lot of it is because of his humility. I really do. 
Yeah, that's true. Guess, it might be. It might be. I don't know if they say he's here. the best player, but I think they'll say he's top three, and he's definitely not top three. I think people like to put him after Durant and James, and I don't. I think Chris Paul's clearly the third best player in the league, and I don't think people see it that way. I don't well, we're not why. talking fantasy. People like to talk fantasy. I mean, he'll get you stats. Yeah, Chris Paul, is, I think, is clearly the third best player in the league too. But right. I just, or, I mean, it, we're we're not counting Kobe, obviously, right now. I mean, Kobe's you know banged up, but count I, Kobe. It's still Chris Paul. Ah, uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I like you know I like Derrick Rose, but I think because of the people who love Derrick Rose, he he's just so overblown. And I feel I feel like the the year he won MVP, I didn't think. It was clearly him, but <laughs> that was I LeBron mean, that, year too. I, mean, I yeah. thought it was LeBron. I thought Dwight Howard had a strong bid that year as well. But I mean, it was uh, you know, it's it's Derrick no. Rose. He's he's got a huge fan base, and and obviously he's going to do great things this year. I think, but I'm going with LeBron. Listen, long winded. Um, I, I agree. I agree with what Andy's saying because I think that uh, that Durant and his team, that Oklahoma will Oklahoma City rather, they will struggle to score. Um, Ibaka is like falling in love with his jump shot uh, in. You know, once a big man falls in love with a jump shot like that, it's, like, very difficult to get him back in the post. Shout out to Josh with, Smith. Yo, shout out to Josh Smith, no <laughs> doubt. But um, with that being said, I, I'm going to go with LeBron because it's just his time. It's just that simple. Like, every every decade or so, this is somebody's yeah. time. And right now it's his time. So he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna win an MVP, probably the defensive player of the year. Um, They might give him the sixth man even though he starts. Like, it's <laughs> – it's just the guy's time. It's as simple as that. Hey, Dev, what are you going to say, Dev? Hey, but I I just wanted to, you know, uh, address what Andy said about um, Derrick Rose. I also agree. But the thing is, you know, the people who watch the video, they're going to go crazy. They're going to be up in arms because we use the word overrated. What fans don't understand is overrated is not always a bad word. Like he would Talk say, to if, him. If he thinks – LeBron is the best player in the league. Derrick Rose is four and he's number one, and he obviously overrated. So he's not saying that he's not good. He's not saying that he's not great. He's just saying that a lot of you people are overrating him a little bit. Right. I hope exactly. you understand that. Exactly. exactly. So if you oh. think if right if you that think Derrick Rose is the third best player in the league, if you think Derrick Rose is the third best player in the league, but he's actually the sixth, he's overrated. Even though he's the sixth best player in the league, he's still overrated. And that's and the thing is, that's not a slight to him. I mean, Michael Jordan right. is overrated. I said it. Yo. But, um, <laughs> he is. No, he is. He is overrated. Michael whoa, Jordan. Whoa, whoa. Okay, I got. I finally got someone. Andy's on my. Andy's on the team. I, he's overrated. I mean, it is what it is. But I'm that's what he is. Jimmy thinks everybody's <laughs> overrated though. Michael no, Jordan, no, 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 Barry no, no. Sanders, no, Dan Marino, everybody. Like Barry. No, Barry is overrated. No, no I'm <laughs> Dan Marino is overrated. Brett Favre is overrated. Tupac is overrated. I'm sorry. Oh, no, Tupac is overrated. <laughs> no, Santos. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Yeah. <laughs> At any rate, yo, let's Last get into all my uh, enemies. Let, oh, let's okay. get um, let's get into our pitch for each conference. Uh, the conference finals. Um. And Andy, I'll start with you. Who do you have in the conference finals, East and West? Do we skip most improved? I mean, if you want to do most improved player, uh, we don't have to. They actually don't do that in the NBA anymore, but we can. Shout yeah, out to Jonas Valanciunas. Derrick Rose. Derrick oh, Rose. No, 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 he would be coming. No, <laughs> hey, we, we can jump right into that. Uh, the, I was thinking comeback the player, my bad. They don't do comeback player anymore. Yeah, they don't anymore. do comeback. They have the most okay. improved. They do most improved, my bad. They probably get after LeBron anyway. <laughs> um, he, worked, he worked on his defense. But anyway, Andy, who do you have in the conference final? Let's go right to that. Okay, so uh, starting in the East because we're East Coast guys. I have uh, the Miami Heat, and I have the Indiana Pacers. Okay, and who do you have making it out of the East? I have the Miami Heat. Oh, what about the West? Uh, in the West, I have the San Antonio Spurs and the Los Angeles Clippers, and I have the Clippers coming out of the West. The Heat and the Clippers in the finals. And who do you have winning the finals? I have the Heat winning the finals. So I didn't want to say that, but that's what you, you know. <laughs> Just being objective. I appreciate that. Dev. I, I, have, I have some faith in the Clippers. I got you, Dev. Who do you have in the Eastern Conference Finals and Western Conference Finals? Man, I, I love the Pacers. I would probably, you know, since we're rigging for Wiggins, of course, I would love to see the Pacers do it. Um, I think this may be 
you know, the Bulls year to come back and, and, and challenge the Heat. So I'll go Chicago Bulls and Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, I'm going to go Oklahoma City. And I'm, I usually don't pick the Spurs, and they keep winning. So now that I'm going to pick the Spurs <laughs> to go to the, the Western Conference Finals. Don't for the part tears ACL. They're not going to they're not gonna do it. And, and it might have something to do with injuries and age. Um, coming out of the East, I'm going to go with the Bulls. Wow. I'm, I, I've picked the Heat for the last three years. Um, I I just think that injuries may start to catch up with this team. Um, Dwayne Wade looks great right now, but how long is that going to hold up? Um, I always think that the Miami Heat are one injury away from not winning the title, and it, it just always seems like luck is always on their side. Like Chris Bosh, the year before last, came back at the exact right time to save that team from from disaster. Um, last year, everything fell into place. I think this year might be the year that it won't happen. So I'm going to go with the Chicago Bulls, who will also have a chip on their shoulder. Um, not sure if they're going to make it through either. Um, they're kind of injury prone. But uh, on the Western side of things, I'm going to go with Oklahoma City. And I have the Chicago Bulls winning the championship over 38-point averaging Kevin Durant. In the Oklahoma City Thunder. <laughs> Got you, Frank. Frank, who is your pick? All right, so mine's gonna cause a little controversy. I don't Uh-oh. have the Heat in my Eastern Conference Finals. Damn. I got Bulls and the Nets because I think the Nets match up extremely well with the with the Heat, and that's hold just on, not my fan talking. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Like that's not my fan too, talking. Let, let, but let's just put this out here, though, so everybody don't. knows. You are, Net, you are a Nets fan, right? I am a Nets fan. <laughs> okay, but all right. I'm not, I'm I, will go as far, I will go as far as to say that the Bulls, Pacers, or the Nets will beat – any one of those teams will beat the Heat in the second round. Okay. Any one of them. Because they all match up wonderfully against the Heat. And okay. I'm like Devin, and I think the Heat are one injury away from not being relevant. Dwayne Way looked old. Chris Bosh looked lost in the finals. And I don't. I think those problems are being ignored because they won the championship, but they're still there. Um, in the Western Western Conference Finals, I have the Grizzlies, which I think people are sleeping on huge, sleeping on the Grizzlies I and the Clippers. On them last year, <laughs> Grizzlies and the Clippers, and then I got the Bulls and the Clippers in the finals with the Bulls winning the championship. Got you. I think the um, Grizzlies. I think they had a quick window of opportunity. I think is gone. They did. Yeah, they don't have a playmaker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, here's my pick. You I guys think they needed about Rudy Gay last year. <laughs> much as I hate to much. admit that, I think they make a move. I think they make yeah. a move to improve. All right. Here's my pick. I think that the Bulls and the Heat will meet in the Eastern Conference Finals. I have the Heat winning. I think LeBron James is going to go crazy this year. I think LeBron might average a triple double. Like seriously, like I think LeBron James is going to do something real stupid this year. But um, and like I said, it's just his time. Uh, he will be there. Um. You know, the new commissioner will make sure of that. Anyway, um, in the Western Conference, <laughs> I, <laughs> in the Western Conference, I have the Spurs and the Clippers meeting uh, with the Clippers going to the finals. And the only reason I don't want to say OKC is because I think that um, the Westbrook injury, I think they're going to dig a hole like we mentioned earlier because not only is it just for scoring, if you look at how the team plays without Westbrook, everybody else, they don't even get the same shots because he puts so much pressure on the defense the way he uh, drives to the basket. And they don't have anyone else to do that, to create the plays the way he does. So I think they'll fall into a hole that's going to be difficult to get out of. And in terms of the playoffs, you know, they have to go, to the, go on the road. So I want to go with the Spurs and the Clippers, but the Clippers coming out the West, and then I'll have the Heat and the Clippers with the Heat winning another championship. And I know that's the easy pick, but like I said, I just think it's just this guy's time right now. And I don't think you know, I don't think it's the easy pick at all. It, it's it's extremely tough to win three championships no, in a row. That's that, why I don't I mean, think they're going to do it. P- picking a two-time champion is sort of like a cop-out. You know what I mean? Like, Right. So I don't want to seem like a cop out, but I, I just I just think that I mean they went to three straight finals for Christ's sakes, but I just think that right now this guy's playing basketball at that level. You know, I don't want to compare him to the Jordans and Kobe's, but that's what he's doing right now. This is his time. And Dwayne Wade's still real good too, and people, I just can't people and, 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 and that's and, and that's it. I'm, I'm not taking anything away from anybody else because he does have Dwayne Wade, he does have Chris Bosh, and don't forget about Greg Oden. But um. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys hey, are laughing. Hey, hey Greg, Dev, 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 the other day. Dev, Dev talks about how Dev always talks about how the Heat seem to get lucky, and it's true. Greg Oden probably will come back and average like fifteen and ten Greg for the rest Oden of his career. Greg Oden will never get injured. 
Yeah, I'll never get injured. Never get injured again as long as he's injured. That's the kind of luck that they have as a team. Everything seems to fall right in place for him. It's going Yo, to how long do you think it took Michael Beasley? He's going to be to number one. Club. He's going to be number one pick, Greg Oden. Watch. Yeah. How long do you think it took Michael Beasley to find the strip club in Miami? <laughs> <laughs> probably look for that. Look for that now first. But Michael Beasley would probably like. No, you he, know, he already knew where he was from the first. Lo- time. Longer than That's it right. took him to punch himself in the head a couple times. Yeah, yeah but that's crazy. He's probably been kicked out of half those strip clubs already, Dev. He needed to find a new spot to kick it at. He needed to find a new one. <laughs> he went down. You better call Stephen Jackson. Something. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, we got all of our picks down for our first episode. So the last question I have before we get out of here, anybody have anything off the wall they want to predict for this season? And it could be anything. Frank, give me give me something that you think will happen this season that will shock people. The Washington Wizards will have a better record than the New York Knicks. Wow. Ooh. Wow. I don't have anything. Okay. Nowhere near that good. Shout out to you. <laughs> what you got, Dev? Mm. Got, got anything, Dev? I don't know, man, because I, I live in the Washington area, and every time they feel any type of optimism, it doesn't work out. So <laughs> I think every basketball guy in the country thinks, yeah, the Wizards are going to get the seven for AC. They'd probably be worse than the Sixers. But um, uh, I, I, don't, Yo, I don't have anything. Nobody's going to be worse than the Sixers. Sixers are going to be so bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Dev, you got nothing the good to say, Sixers, though? I'm not saying that. I'm going to say that. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Andy, what you got for us? Uh, my Actually, mine has to do with the Wizards, too. It's it's funny that Frank's always, like, one step ahead of me here. Uh, not so much to do with the Wizards as a team, but I think uh, I think John Wall's really going to arrive this year. Uh, I guess it's not quite off the wall, but I, I think he might smell like <laughs> 20 points a game. Mm. <laughs> smell like? Will his jump shot get any better this year? I mean, has he worked on his jump shot? I think it already did. Yeah, they said he has. When he came back last season, it seemed a lot better. I mean, it's... Okay. He was a big difference maker when he came back last season. This is your electric guy. I like him. And we, we asked, the, you know, because Kyrie Irving is the the popular pick for the next big the new thing. Derek Derrick Rose. Right. So we, do, we, we put a versus on our Facebook page of uh, Wall versus... Uh, Kyrie, and it was like overwhelmingly Kyrie, but I think the, some of the answers, I think they were like disrespecting John Wall a little bit. Like, <laughs> so he's not head and shoulders better than John Wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's so we'll my... See. I've already gave my um, my off-the-wall thing, and it's not really off-the-wall. I think LeBron James is going to average a triple-double this year. I really do. I, it, I just think that he has the ability. He's flirted with it several times, but, you know... I don't think we'll see that again. Not in our lifetime. I said I, know again, that, I wasn't. I wasn't alive the first time, but I'm about to say. But at the end of the day, I mean, Magic flirted with it a couple of times, but I, you know, it's it's difficult to do. But now that they have Greg Oden down there to take some of the pressure off of scoring, then, <laughs> I mean, you know, what the and hell? And dunk and dunk and that get post-game. dunks and get dunks. Help him get easier assists. You know, a couple. Yo, of I'm surprised games. they didn't stop the game when he dunked and like had a whole celebration. <laughs> yeah, they treated it like like a like a baseball player's first hit. Like you know, they give him the ball and everything. Like <laughs> that little case that it goes in. You know, they oh, almost no. gave Greg Oden a whole case for his first basketball that he dunked. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, gentlemen, uh, this has been the first episode of Court Vision. We'll bring this every week during the NBA season. So we'll be here from now until like the summertime. That being <laughs> said, share the video, like the video, also give us a comment. Let us know who you think will win all these awards we mentioned, as well as uh, your early picks for the conference finals, as well as the NBA finals. Again, all of our opinions are subject to change. <laughs> By the time we get to the All Star break, we'll let you know how we feel. By With tomorrow that being night. Said, yeah, by tomorrow night, after the first game, when somebody gets injured, you know. But anyway, with that being said, thanks for watching. As always, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance. We'll see you chumps on top. The wait is the war room with five nights at the round table. Five Philly guys diversified and educated.